Hi, my name is Simon Sanchez. I'm with Sagan Company in Salt Lake City, Utah. We were looking for a high quality ink without a high price tag. But at the same time, we didn't want to compromise quality. We find out that when we print, it has a high opacity, low Q temperature, and it's easier to work with. Yes, we're really happy with the results that Monarchin has provided for our screen printing needs. Yes, we would highly recommend Monarch Inks for all garment screen printers because it's easy to work with, it has high opacity, and it's a low cost ink. Hey, I'm Andy from Shirkong, and this is why we like Monarch Ink. Number one. We wanted to work with an ink manufacturer that understands how their ink performs on all the different garment types. We've got cotton, 50-50, tri-blends, 100% poly, and we need to make sure our ink holds up no matter what. So I guess what I'm saying is, is that we wanted to work with a company that could help us make those tough choices. Number two, white inks. I wanted to keep our white ink choice simple, so we run Stark LB, which is our everyday low bleed white ink and ULT2, which stands for ultra low temperature. We use that for our problem fabrics like 100% poly. Number three is their high opacity mixing system. So for us, a mixing system needs to be accurate, it needs to mix up fast, and it needs to print through a high mesh screen with a single stroke. And, 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 what's really cool is that the mixing system uses Stark, just our everyday white. So no need to stock another color. If you're looking for a company with great customer service, some killer whites, and a high opacity mixing system, then you should give Monarch a try. Hey everyone, this is Steven from Campus Inc. Today I wanna to tell you a little bit about a new ink that we just started using. Um, we have been working with Dave over at Multicraft to bring in Monarch inks into our shop. Now, we just started out with the stark white ink and right from first pass, it was creamier to use, cured really, really well, the hand was really great, and our printers really, really loved using it. We stepped it up and tried some of their nicer inks, um, their low bleed, and their Yeti ink, and those are incredible. I recommend this ink. We've definitely worked with inks like Rutland, International Coatings, even One Stroke, um, but the price point, um, the durability, the opacity, the way this ink covers is, uh, is second to none. We're really excited. We're gonna start bringing in more colors to use, and uh, from what we've seen and from heard from our friends in the industry, they absolutely love it. So if you'd like to try it out, you can hit up our friends at Multicraft or let anyone at Monarch know, and they'll take great care of you.
things here. We're talking segue. about some ink. Yeah. Do you even know what we're going to talk about? You probably don't. No idea. Yeah. So I'll ask the questions, okay? You don't say anything. Okay. Do, you want, me to, do you want me to act like I'm frozen? <laughs> How about you just do some model poses every once in a while you change it like Jonathan, like our, our buddy down there at Success. My eyes are drying out. <laughs> I'm going to let him in. Don't mess this up. Do you know what to ask if you were going to ask a question? How much wood does a woodchuck chuck? All right. Like I said, let me do the talking, okay? Hey, hey, Ron. Hey, hey. Hey, where's your um, beautiful face? All we got is your beautiful voice. Well, that's not good. Let's let's see if we can fix that. I forgot I'm not allowed to talk. No. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. Let's do this. There we go. Dude, are Get you out. growing out are you growing Hold out on. a hefty mustache? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, look at that book cover back there. I know exactly what book that is. What? <laughs> Huh. Oh, it just happens to be there. Just happens to be there. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Dude, you could get like a really good Western mustache. <laughs> I could. I really should go handles. You'd be like the cover of Tombstone. It's actually not a bad idea. I, I, should, I, I should look into that. Yeah, just handlebar it. You know, I used to, um, every um, Labor Day weekend, I used to uh, grow chops. Oh, sorry, Andy. I'm ruining this. I'm talking. I'm making small no, talk, my I mean, man. Uh, I love talking about mustaches. I mean, Alex, I'm sure we got to give him a call real quick. Get him on on this. I wonder if his is still going. A mustache off? <laughs> what, that would be a mustache on, wouldn't it? Mm. I don't know. Dylan, we could have a beard off. Like we could over a certain I, period of time. So you could I shaved in. this before this podcast, but I had to go take a poop real quick. And when I grunt hard, it just pops out of my face. <laughs> it happens. That's gross. We don't. Anytime want to I do anything, anything strenuous, <laughs> hair grows. No, I told you, don't screw this up. You're Sorry. not supposed to be. Sorry, I'm not, supposed, not supposed, to be supposed to be talking. This is like serious stuff, and we're trying to figure something out here. Okay. All right, go ahead. Don't That's ruin right. this. Start it. Go ahead. Um, okay, so about a week ago, I saw some people in a in a group, and they were talking about which ink to buy, which ink line I should say to buy or series, because their question was, if I'm going to convert to like a low cure or like a low temp ink, um, shouldn't all my inks be like that? Or should all my inks be just the standard cure? And, um, and I, I saw that and I was, I was like thinking about it, like, well, that was well, a really good question. And I called you First, we became friends on Facebook. I forgot, I forgot about that because we weren't friends on Facebook and, we, and I needed to message you. And so um, I requested your friendship and you said, yeah, so let's celebrate that. Absolutely. I mean, Annie, you got to feel privileged. You're part of the inner circle now. So mm. cheers. Cheers yeah, to cheer, being friends cheer. on Facebook. There you go. Yeah, that's awesome. Dylan, I don't think you're not part of this. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so... Uh, and then we called, or, and then I called you and we talked about it because I wanted to know, because my, my position was, well, low cure inks cost more. So unless you really need them, why would you use them? Um, but that was the only really argument I had, you know, I didn't even take into consideration. Well, if all of our inks were low cure, I guess we could lower our dryer temp. And I mean, that's a good thing, right? Because we're going to have less energy cost, but I think there's a lot more to it from what you were saying. And uh, you you said it so well. I thought maybe you could come on real quick and explain it to us. So, sure. Um, I, I wish again, like you were seeking. I wish there was a straightforward answer, but I, there's so many variables. I don't think it's a it's a yes or no question. Um, I, I think for the sake of this discussion, I think we need to define low temp inks as those inks that cure at 280 degrees or below. 300, 300 degree curing ink isn't what I would call a low temp ink. It's not in that category. Um, so just for definition, so we're all talking the same, the same lingo. Um, that's really what's defined as the, the low temp category. Um, and I would say the very first question is going to be what size is your dryer? That is, that is key for low temp inks. Why, why is that important? You, when you say size, you mean the length of the dryer. Correct. The length of the tunnel. Length of the tunnel, so, right. Correct. So 
The reason why that's important is you can't cheat the system like you can on standard cure temp banks. So in standard cure temp banks, if I've got not enough tunnel to give me a 45 to 60 second dwell time, and the dwell time is considered the time at which the shirt enters the tunnel versus the time at which the shirt and exits the tunnel. So what you were to do low temp inks, you have to have a 45 to 60 second dwell time, depending on the fabric. So obviously thicker fabrics require a longer dwell time, thinner fabrics require a shorter dwell time. So why, why do you have to have that, that amount of time? Are you, you, I think we talked about that a little bit and you said something like, how are you curing the surface and not all the way, it's not penetrating the entire. It's like baking a cake. Dylan? Yeah. Or, or a pie, as it were. Either either one works. Um, I like pies you, more. Pie, you like pies more? Okay, let's go for the fruit pie. Theory. Sorry, I started talking again. <laughs> I like I like this pie. And also, and also, apparently, shirt show, you heard it first on shirt show, size matters. That's right. That's right. Okay, guys, continue. Sorry. Um, yeah, let's use the pie metaphor. So, yeah, talk to us about. Okay, so if we're using the pie metaphor, um, if I turn up the temperature and have a shorter dwell time, you're basically broiling the pie, right? So the top of a pie gets done, the crust is crispy, it looks done, but the filling is still cold. Like The a filling pie. hasn't gelled up, hasn't done anything. So it actually creates kind of a, a heat barrier for the rest of the ink or the rest of the pie, where in low temp inks, you really wanna bake the ink. Right, so we want to get a consistent cure temperature across the entire depth of the ink, just like you would a pie, right? So you, that's why you bake a pie at 350, not at 450. It's the same analogy. Okay. Um, I guess if you had to, if you don't have a long enough, or if your dryer happens to be shorter, you could slow your belt down. You know, just try and achieve that 45 second. Of course, that then that's going to bottleneck there. Correct. And that's, and that's things, again, as we start thinking about, okay, is this, is low temp inks good for me? Okay. Well, if I have a 36 inch tunnel and I'm trying to get that 45 second to 60 second dwell time, it may be too slow for me to get any production through it at all. Okay. So at, at that point in time, you have to look, okay, maybe low temp inks isn't currently for me. Got it. So unless it's maybe a special application, you know, you have something, an order come through that um, on some garments that you want to cure at low, uh, like a little at a low temp, then maybe it makes sense. But on your everyday, like for your everyday ink, low temp maybe doesn't make sense for some people. Correct. Um, and I, I would say the, the second factor. So, it, so let's just assume, you know, I have a long enough tunnel and um, I'm considering, okay, now what? Now what do I got to consider as point number two to consider whether I want to go low temp inks or not? And the second one would be fabric makeup on what you're printing on. So if what I'm printing on is basically blends and cottons and maybe 20 to 30% of what I print on is polyester, there, you're, save your money, there's really no point on going low temp inks. You can have a low temp under base but other than that, there's really no point. But now if we flip the script a little bit and 70% of what you print on is sports apparel and polyester and blends represents maybe 30%. Okay, well then that's starting to make sense because now you can take advantage of what low temp inks provide, which is that softer hand, stretchier feel and increased bleed resistance. Got it. So then, you know, the, the third point would be what kind of printing do you do? So, you know, do I print you doing um, process, you know, simulated process, or am I printing doing um, um, more simple, you know, am I doing more simple prints like you would see in athletic apparel? Mm -hmm. um, in your fourth one, I would say, and it really, each low temp ink that's out there is, how you the process is slightly different, but it is different than standard cure temp inks. Not necessarily a ton, but am I willing to change my processes? Right. Whether it be a whether it be one process or five, am I willing to do anything different that I'm doing today? Right. 
that number three, I mm -hmm. think, um, as far as sim simulated process, I think that was um, something Dylan brought up um, with regards to a wet on wet printing and its tackiness. Do you, um, is that what you uh, understand? Dylan? Yeah, I, it's, it's, I, I said that. And then I got Facebooked immediately after I said that. And someone said, well, you're not curing, you're not flashing your ink correctly. And then I slammed my laptop to the ground and said, fuck this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Okay, so wet on wet printing is assuming you're not flashing. <laughs> so if I'm not flashing, my flash really has nothing to do with it. I was just making a point of saying that <laughs> I'm going to open my mouth it's again. It's so true. Get... It's so true, though, because whenever dude, I comment on three of those groups, I get fucked. Like, dude, I'm, every I'm never time. commenting again. Exactly. It's horrible. <clears throat> so anyway, I just was saying that low cure inks are more tacky mm -hmm. and then i immediately got that push my glasses up i know more than you answer and, then, and i said i'm not helping you guys anymore you you you, you will run into that the i've been doing <laughs> this for 30 years you can't yeah. tell me something i don't already know mm -hmm. right but i know for us it's just like it's it's realistic versus what the textbook says it's like if we're printing wet on wet simulated process it to us it seems a lot better not using low cure inks because of them being too tacky or the screen smacking or whatever and it's like that's what works for us that's what we wanted to use and then when i had the conversation with you aaron in the beginning you basically clarified that you're like yeah don't go with those inks go with these inks because of that so i was like all right cool like this is real talk not like this is what's supposed to happen so to me, that's why we chose the Vivid system. Yeah, I, I, I will say that, you know, do you see many simulated process jobs on sports apparel? I don't. Right. You know, and that's really what they, you know, the low temp inks were really designed not for your everyday retail printer. Right. And that's what that's what I've always looked at when I was looking at either low cure versus standard temp is just in my mind, it's always 50, 50 and 100 percent cotton over here and 100 percent poly over here. And that's what I've always been like. I barely do any 100 percent poly. And then when we do, I just add low cure additive in the ink or and I'll use a performance white specifically for poly as the underbase or whatever over here with low cure in the top colors. Right. Or over here, I'll just use a, you know, standard cure plastic all for everything else. So to me, for my shop, that's what makes the most sense. So that's what I try to tell people when they're like, Oh, low cure versus standard temp. I think the thing why a lot of people are asking nowadays is just because it seems to be like a new trend of like all these inks are coming out, trying to be low cure and people are like, well, why? Like, why am I going to low cure versus what I've been used to for 10 years or whatever? Well, so the reason why companies are going after low, low temp is the reality of it is, is when you're printing on polyester and you get a fairly good bleeder on polyester, the, the dying jobs of polyester are getting worse. They're not getting better. So the reality of it is this is okay well standard cure temp polyester inks cannot bleed block not enough i don't I, I don't care what polyester white you're using if you're curing at 320 340 degrees and you're gassing out you know polyester dyes good luck it's that's why you know the gray dye blocker was invented right because it's it's just sometimes it's just not enough well, as an ink company, that's how you can, how we can fix that problem or help mitigate that problem is, okay, if we were curing out at 270, which is before the temperature at which dyes gas out, we're helping to eliminate or reduce the possibility of dying. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of it. Right. It was, no, it makes, I don't think it they were ever sense. intended for, you know, blends and, and cottons unless you needed stretch. Right. No, it makes I think, total sense. I think this kind of goes back to um, like trying to find that everyday white or a white that fit like that would 
that work in every situation. You know, it's kind of like the ink that will work in every situation. And I understand the logic because you want to, you don't want to invest in two whole systems, you know, because you have, that's way more money to inventory and stock in your shop. And so that costs a whole lot more, kind of like with the whites. I, I wish I could just buy one white, you know, and that's all I have, but I have to get one that's also 400% poly, you know? And so I think the same can be said for this, at least in our shop anyway. And that is um, we're mostly cotton and blends and, and tri blends and we're not mostly polyester, although those do come along. And, and maybe it might be that uh, we have an order that I specifically order some ink in from you guys to, uh, so I don't have to, you know, um, cure it at 300, I can go to 280. Um, or I guess the other alternative is like you said, put up uh, like some sort of barrier. And um, and we talked about that last last episode, but I wanted to address this because it was a great question and I didn't really absolutely have the answer as a shout out goes to Meg. I don't know what shop she was at, but you actually jumped on there and tried to answer it. Um, you said that it was like the most common question you get. In fact, like this is, this is a big question. It's like your question you're asked most often. And um and so I thought it was important just to come on and, and chat about it to try and help clear it up, you know. Because. No, and I appreciate that. And I, and I would also say um, that not all low temp inks are created equal. Just because it's low temp doesn't mean it'll do what low temp ink is supposed to do. It, it definitely goes under the you get what you pay for analogy. Just like with anything, right? If it's, if it's too inexpensive, there's probably a reason for it. So that's, I mean, that's, or, you know, if, if you're using a low temp ink and you still got to use a gray dye blocker on polyester, probably not the best low temp ink in the world. You really should only need a gray dye blocker if you're printing on, um, digital camo. Yeah. Digital camo or <laughs> anything dyes up, right? Right. The hated, the hated digital camo. Yes. Yes. Well, we appreciate it, Aaron. Uh, we wanted to, like I said, get you on here for some clarification because we wanted to make sure we weren't acting like know-it-alls because we don't. And we wanted you to tell us and send us straight. No, I appreciate that. And I would say, you know, for anybody who is considering it, you know, check with your local distributor of inks or your local ink manufacturer and ask them, hey, is, is low temp inks right for me? And let them help you work through that process. Right. All right, well, you go uh, finish grooming that mustache, man. We'll do. We'll do. I'm on it. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you later. All right, thanks, guys. Aaron, you thank you. All right, take care.